My name is Willie Pika. I'm from the Comanche Nation. I'm a traditional born arrow maker for the tribe. This is something I've learned from as I was a youth, seven, eight years old, uh, just trying to keep up with my traditions. At the time when I thought about it and wanted, had the interest and wanted to do it, not many of our people were still making bows and arrows. I had to search out, ask my grandparents, who made bows, who made arrows, who could help me? Because I wanted to learn the traditional ways of doing these things. And it was hard. Um, even the guys that knew how kind of didn't make them anymore. So today we're going to start out with just a quick demonstration on the bows and arrows in general, how we, you would shoot them. Uh, later on we'll get into other parts of uh, how to cut the wood, how to cure it, and how to finish off the whole product. Give you a basic idea of steps that we go through. Um, so that's what we do today. Today uh, we have a bow dark bow. Uh, you can tell it's real dark. It's called Osage Orange. When you first cut the wood, it's a real orange kind of wood and orange looking. But as you put oil in it in the years, this one's close to 20 years old, it gets darker and it stays stays that way if you make it just right. Traditional arrows that the Comanches would use made out of uh, dogwood, shafts. This one is uh, in the style of our Comanche people. Longer feathers at the end, shorter, usually plumes of different colors and they would paint them and decorate them based on, you know, who's making them. So they would be able to tell, oh yeah, I would buy the colors and the style so-and-so made this, Saw Pity made this, uh, Poco made these, that would be. But arrows are anywhere from probably 25 to 28 inches long, real short. And the bows are shorter too. Bows were anywhere from, I would say, 44 inches to maybe 49, 50 inches long. Uh, the reason behind them, they had to be shorter because we're horse people. We traveled, we hunted, we ward behind the bow, but you had to be, have something that is short and maneuverable from the back of a horse. So a short bow really worked. There's stories of our people as they were, you know, hunting or even at war, they could shoot an arrow from any part of the horse, under the belly, hanging on with uh, rawhide pieces under the neck, even behind the tail. They would be able, because the bow was so short and uh, maneuverable that it worked out. And one interesting thing that I found out too, if you look at the end of the bow, it's only knocked on one side because when you string it up, it was easier just to pop it in on one side than to pop it in on both sides. So the bottom would be secure, but the top would have one knock. So if you just pull it up and it popped in, the string is ready to go. So that would, that would be the process you use. And, uh, a lot of times I would hold my arrows, you know, my bow, and even some of the elves would tell me, Comanches held them with the, the point side up. They said the Kiowas, when they were riding their horse, they always had the arrows like this, with the feather side up. So at the distance, they could tell whether they were Kiowas or Comanches. All my elders say, you know, hold it like this, that's Comanche style. Just little bits and pieces on tradition of them. But uh, it's easier to make, like I said, uh, Comanche bows are real short, easy remove, uh, to be able to shoot from any part of the horse that you needed. And you have to think about it. Our bows are made short. They're instinct shooting. Just pull back, let it go. It's not traditional uh, European style where you got to pull it all the way back to your cheek, aim, and let it go. That's not our bows. Ours are short instinct style. The other side, whenever you see real Comanche people shooting, they don't stand up straight and shoot like this. They're always crouching down. And the old ones told me that crouching down, you, you <clears throat> minimize your target. So you try to make yourself smaller. So by uh, standing up high, you, you're a bigger target. But if you're crouching down, it, it's, it's a smaller target. It's just bits and pieces they keep telling me. But it's easy, like I said, it's instinct shooting that our people would do. Just point and shoot. Be a quick way to do it.
what I'm looking for dogwood, what I try to find is, if you look at some of the, the trees, that, uh, the limbs at the top are red, so I see kind of a red haze in them. So usually then I see that and I'll stop and check it out. Then you got to look through, uh, into the bushes and you'll see the straight sticks. One of the reasons I like to cut them in uh, this time of year is uh, I like to cut them when sap is down. So I do it in December through January, early for February, because if you cut it after then, you can see that the limbs are already starting to bud out. Just a little bit. That means it's going to bring the sap up. So then it, it'll saturate the wood where it starts to get real green. And then it has too much sap in it that it's harder to cure. It takes longer. Then as I cut them down, I'll just take the limbs off and get an idea of uh, where I'm going to be able to make the arrow. Right quick, I see like I'd like to start here because you get here, you see a little bend in it, but that still would work. I'm going to cut it longer and then I'll uh, later on size it to make sure but that's going to make a a nice arrow as straight as it is just coming out of the creek. And just uh, just the idea of the arrow bag that I make, it's one style that I make and I make several different ones. But we're going to go through the process of making that and we're going to, from, coming from the creek, we collected these already. These are dogwood shafts that we come to the creek that we're going to take this and eventually we're going to come up to this. We cut them one of the things that you have to do first before we even get started once you cut them then you have to take the bark off okay and that's just the process you have to do if you don't take the bark off and you let it go uh, the bark dries on and it is hard to get off later so what we do is just try to take the bark off and get it down to the wood itself you can see where there's a green tint. You want to take that off and that part of the bark. So I'll just keep shaving it off until we get to that. As you go, you'll see these little nubs where the limbs were. You want to nick those off and take those off. And just the process you got to do and uh, to get them clean. Eventually, you keep working them down and uh, you have an arrow shaft that is ready to be put together. First, you got to take all the bark off, all the different ones that we have, and then what, after I do that, I cut them to length, and I keep straightening them. Um, then I have to bundle them together. Usually, I do a bundle of seven. That way, you have one in the center. One in the center, then it all kind of falls together on the side. It just kind of, you know, lays perfect. So as you bundle them together, just put them together, and I wrap it, tie it, wrap it, tie it, and then I just leave them. Then a week or so later, I'll take them out, and I'll start shaping them down again, getting the imperfections off. So, uh, let me get back to the part all over. Kind of pause it and you can come back in. Like I said before, once you tie the feather down, what you do is you have to, at the tail end, just bend it over and then it's tied down like this. And then once you tie it and wrap it, and then you would pull it down and over and then pull it to the front. That, was, that, that tightens it up. I'll do one right quick. Show you the process. It's just a lengthy process, but it's the best process because a lot of people, you know, didn't have glue. So then you would have it tied down. And what you do, like I said, what you do is pull it forward and pull it down to the front and then you would wrap it again in the front 
and that pulls it down. He gets a nice type. Comanches are one of the few tribes that even do this. A lot of people, uh, not a tribe, they do their different. They tie them down in the back. And it just, it's good, but then it pulls down. I mean, you can't pull them, pull them tight enough to get them down the way you want them. So, once you do that and get it done, usually with the feathers, I knock them in front. Uh, for the point to come in. Now, Comanche use a lot of different points. Uh, the progression for arrow points was first they came in with bone, and any kind of bone just to make a sharp point, and you have an uh, arrow coming out of the bowl, as long as you've got that point, it doesn't matter. Anything can be used. But the a bone, pick, they pick up a bone and, you know, be able to rub it on a rock and shape it the way they want. A bone point was good, but it breaks, okay? So then as, as time goes by, they went from bone, they went to stone. Stone, you could flint nap it, and flake them off, and make a nice point. They would go to that. As Europeans come through, the settlers, then he went to, uh, they would say they would make the arrow point out of a wagon wheel. The wagon wheel that they had, they would break off a piece of the, that metal that goes around the wheel and pound it down and shape an arrow point. That's what they used to use. And then as your friends came coming through, they found that, you know, that they wanted something lighter because the wagon wheel arrow points would shoot them. And anytime you have an arrow and you got a heavy front, it goes so far and starts, it's called dipping. It'll go out and start dipping. So they wanted a lighter point. They found out that the Europeans had these little hand saws, the old hand saws that they used to have. That's what this comes from. What they do is take a cold chisel and chisel them down to the shape that you want. They break them off. They can sharpen. You can sharpen these uh, like broadheads. You buy at the sports, sports store. Then you can put a razor edge on these things because of the carbon contact in the, in the steel. So that's what I would do is uh, make a bunch of those then I would cut the knock out. You got to make sure the knock is straight because you want it to you don't want your arrow bending, you know, because if you get it, it turn the track, but you got to have it straight as you can up and down. So knock it then you would wrap it and put your arrow together and you would have a completed arrow like this.